With AI technology taking center stage, have you heard about expressing appreciation through robot written thank you notes? Do you have concerns about this option and wonder how businesses keep a personal touch when sending automated thank you notes? Tune in to today's interview to hear how businesses are using this technology and if it's an option for your business. Welcome to Biz Help For You with host Candy Messer. Entrepreneurs like to focus on the big picture, like profitability, success, and a smooth running organization. But there always seems to be those little things like taxes, employee compensation, laws, regulations, and more. Now you can get the answers you need in one place. Join us today as we break it all down for you. Now, here's your host, Candy Messer. Hello and welcome to Biz Help For You with Candy Messer. Thank you for joining me today. If you missed my last episode and would like to listen to the show, links can be found on my social media pages as well as multiple favorite podcast platforms. And if you'd like to receive notifications on when my podcasts have been uploaded, please like and subscribe. Now let me share a little bit about my guest today. Rick Elmore is an entrepreneur, sales, and marketing expert. As the founder and CEO of Simply Noted, Rick developed a proprietary technology that puts real pen and ink to paper to scale handwritten communication, helping businesses of all industries scale this unique marketing platform to stand out from their competition and build meaningful relationships with clients, customers, and employees. Founded in 2018 and based in Tempe, Arizona, Simply Noted has grown into a thriving company with clients of various sizes across the country, including in hospitality, real estate, insurance, nonprofit, franchise, B2B, and others. Rick has served as the company's CEO since its founding for more than four years and has over a decade of sales and marketing industry experience. So Rick, welcome to the show. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Candy. I am glad that you're here today to talk about this topic. Uh, but before we get into questions that I have for you specifically on the AI technology, I would love for you sharing a little bit of your story and how did you even get into marketing in the first place? Yeah, so pretty unique background. Actually, if I told you where I came from, you probably wouldn't believe that I am where I am today, but my background's in athletics. I grew up playing basically every sport, but found a really liking to football. Early childhood tragedy, my dad passed when I was seven, so I was like really mm -hmm. angry guy. So football was really good for all the hitting and aggression getting out. So me and I have a twin brother and we're lucky enough to get football scholarships at the University of Arizona. Had a pretty good career there as a three-year starter for Mike Stoops. I led the Pac-10, which is the Pac-10 back then in multiple stat categories. Got to live out my childhood dream. After I graduated, I was drafted into the NFL in 2011 to the Green Bay Packers, the year after they won the Super Bowl and got to play for three years. Eventually, I had to hang up the cleats and, and the shoulder pads like basically every athlete does. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of lost. I thought I was going to play football for the rest of my life, and uh, or at least until I was 30 and have enough money to retire. But uh, <laughs> that's just not the case. So I did what a lot of guys you know, in professional sports do when they get done. They get into competitive sales just because it's challenging, and it kind of feeds into a lot of those intangible assets that you developed as an athlete. Competitive, teamwork, rewarding. It's different, it's challenging. And I had a lot of success there as well. My first year at Striker, I was a rookie of the year for our division. In the next four year or five years in my sales career between Striker and Strauman, I was either top 1% or top five sales guy or sales rep in the company. But I kind of saw where my future was going. I didn't want to be in corporate for the rest of my life. My parents were small business owners. It afforded them the flexibility to go to all our games and travel with us and kind of dictate their own schedules. And I wanted to do that since I was having kids. So I went back and did my MBA. This is kind of like where my business like life changed. I was about a year in, into my uh, my MBA program, full-time evening class, and I was uh, going through, I was in this, a marketing class. And then after about a three-hour lecture of a marketing professor talking about all the success rates in marketing, he said something that was just so obvious. I grew up without like technology. He said handwritten notes had a 99.2% open rate and like email was low, direct mail was low, text message was 
it was kind of high, but it was just incredibly impersonal. It was kind of mm -hmm. like annoying. And I just thought if there's a, a way, you know, if this is a cool business idea. It's like, no one's doing this. If there's a way to scale it or automate it, there may be a really cool business opportunity there. So basically started researching back in 2017, beginning of 2018, if there was any companies doing this, there really wasn't. There was somebody doing it in the wedding industry, which I thought was a terrible industry because those are one-time clients, mm -hmm. maybe two if you're lucky and tested it. I, I got a really bad robot from China and sent out some handwritten notes to my doctors and the response rate was just amazing. I had doctors like literally calling me back, like laughing or just so happy that I was doing something different than knocking on their door or, or spamming their email or texting them and harassing them. They were like, Hey Rick, like this handwritten note is really cool. Thanks for doing this. No one does this. Like let's schedule a lunch and talk more about like your product. And I had a, a quota of $50,000 a month. I sold $280,000 in like six weeks. So mm. basically like that's when the entrepreneurial seizure moment happened. And there's so much more between, you know, that moment and now, but it's just been an incredible journey. We build robots, we work with AI, we work with machine learning. We have 400,000 people using our service every single month. I have patents. I mean, it's just been an incredible journey to say the least. Well, it definitely sounds like this journey that you took from athletics to where you are now. And I always love to hear those stories, too, because I think it's also inspiring for those who are listening to hear, right? You know, you could be in one place, be in some place totally different with one idea even, right? So that one little thing that you heard inspired you and now here you are mm -hmm. with your company. But I know some people are a little concerned with the technology. Like we've heard, you know, yes, AI can really help you in certain areas, but there are some concerns and people might feel like they're going to lose that personal touch too. Like if I have a robot who's writing thank you notes for me, you know, I don't know if people are going to appreciate that. So can you touch on maybe that concern? Sure. Well, I think the majority of people have already lost that personal touch, um, 99.9% .9 of people don't send a handwritten thank you note after a meeting anymore. I think when somebody uses a service like the, us to help automate and send a handwritten note, regardless if that person ever finds out if they use a service like us, it's showing that person that you care that much more to put that much more effort into integrating a personal touch like this. I mean, we live in a digital age. We live in, you know, what was it, 1995 to 2022 was the internet era. Now we're into the AI world. You know, robots are taking jobs. I think really what we're trying to do now is just build more authentic relationships. And if you want to do it through email, try it. I mean, there's 150 emails a day bombarding every single person's inbox. You want to automate a text message, that's not personal. You want to send a postcard that's printed, that's not personal. We truly believe that handwritten notes is that last form of communication that isn't perceived, that could be automated or scaled. And I think people will catch on to this sooner or later that there are services like ours that are out there that can help you do it. But, you know, I think what you're trying to show that person you're sending a handwritten note to, at least you made the extra effort to go the extra mile to set up a service to try to show them that you care, you know, versus just automating a thank you or thank you email like everybody else. Well, I think it's important too. I actually send every podcast guest of mine a handwritten thank you note as well. And, you know, I know they want to be on my show too for exposure, but I am also thanking them for the time, you know, being with me. And so I do that after every episode airs too. And so I do feel it's important to actually have that personal note saying thank you so much, you know, as well. But again, I'm still <laughs> handwriting yeah. those. So if someone's listening and says like, okay, I understand the concept and, you know, I am still sending notes. I do think it's important, but I am handwriting them. Like what is a benefit to using your company versus them still like handwriting that note and dropping it in the mail? Yeah. So exactly what you just said. I mean, that use case, we can absolutely help you automate that once you click this meeting is done or fulfilled, we can set up a trigger. But for one-off cards like that, we may, I tell people don't use our service for mm -hmm. a one card off like that. If you're gonna send one card a day or one card a week, like it's better just to get a, a stack of stationery, have some stamps in your desk and just write it yourself. But it's for companies that wanna systematize, you know, something like this and make sure it's consistent. You know, I, mm -hmm. we have over 46,000 customers that have used mm -hmm. our service and I mean, I've talked to most of them over the last five and a half years, and it's if they could do it themselves, our business wouldn't be 
a business, right. you know, how can you manage 25 sales reps and make sure that the messaging mm -hmm. is consistent, the spelling is, is correct, the mm -hmm. grammar isn't bad, because if you're trying to send, you know, think of a nonprofit, you know, if you have, right. if you get people to sit down and write it yourself, what happens if they misspell a word? What is that going to do to your brand when you send mm -hmm. a handwritten note to a donor that you're asking for $25,000 and they can't even spell correctly, right? right. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of advantages. I, I, I mean, I still use our robots just to send one handwritten note because I know that they are going to do a better job at writing it. And we teach our robots how to write. I mean, it's you have to see it to believe it, but we use machine learning. We don't use fonts, the ink smears. It's absolutely incredible. But for businesses, I think the use case is there for personal use. You know, if you're going to send one or two cards a day, maybe, I mean, I would want to actually 100% say do it yourself. But if you want to integrate, automate, or scale it, you want to make sure it's going to look great. You don't. You want to make sure no one's going to spell anything wrong. You want to right. track it. Like that's why you use a service like us. Mm -hmm. Well, and while you were talking about that too, I was thinking as well, like some things I've seen before where I think with texting too, a lot of times people are just like abbreviating and LOL and all of that stuff too, and not actually writing out words. And so when it comes to actually writing a note, a lot of times people don't have the skill that we used to have many years ago too. And it's sad to say, but I think that is so true. So I see it what is. you're talking about, you know, like having it all written out the way you want it to be presented to make sure that it reflects positively on you. Sure. And so yeah. I definitely see how that could be helpful. Well, think about it. People don't write anymore. And how bad is their handwriting? Like it has mm -hmm. to be an enjoyable experience. The way I look at handwritten notes is like they're little gifts. Like people are giving mm -hmm. you five minutes of their time. Everything else is automated. So if you, I mean, write somebody a handwritten note and they open it and it's really hard to read. It's like doctor, mm -hmm. chicken scratch, scribble, like versus <laughs> something that's really nice. Right. And we, in our, I mean, our, our handwriting styles, like they're not perfect. You don't want them to be perfect whatsoever, but it's, it's a lot nicer than me writing it. You know, it's just like when I write it, I mean, it, it just looks like chicken scratch. So mm -hmm. you want to, you want to put yourselves in their shoes. Think about it from the customer's experience or the recipient's experience, right? Not just from you sit down and putting words on paper real quickly. Right. Well, I also see where you're talking about, like if there was maybe a big fundraiser from an event and a nonprofit wants to send it out, or I'm thinking too, I know I've received, you know, around Thanksgiving time, sometimes companies will send out the cards if they don't want it to be Christmas, you know, or afraid that they might, you know, offend someone if it's Jewish versus Christmas versus Kwanzaa or something too, or a New Year's card, right? And they might have hundreds that they're sending out. So I could also see where maybe that would be a great mm -hmm. way to use the software and not have to hand write 200 or how many, a thousand, you know, depending on the situation, those cards. So I could definitely see how it could make a big difference and make it more efficient for businesses who have a lot that they have to send out. Yeah, it's like the holidays are coming up, the busiest time of the year for us. I mean, almost every business sends something during the holidays. You know, it's to reconnect with their clients, stay top of mind. So that as the new year starts, like they remember them. Also, it's in the year people are trying to spend money for taxes. But like you just said, like it's when you're thinking about like integrating and scaling it, you know, a service like this makes sense. You know, and we always try to tell people just to focus on relationship because we all know the cost of acquiring a new client is way more expensive mm -hmm. than just keeping your current clients happy, having them buy more, increase lifetime value and get more referrals. So we really try to like consult with our clients when they use this, just say a simple thank you. And there was actually a great study done by uh, Harvard Business Review talking about the value of great customer experience and having a relationship with your client, a better relationship, like a rock solid relationship by just lowering your customer churn rate by 5%. So just five mm -hmm. out of a hundred, like your year over year revenue is going to grow at least 25 to 95% in business accounts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just by simply improving your customer turnover, the relationship. I mean, your business is going to grow by just saying thank you. Mm -hmm. So if someone is listening to this and like, I'm really interested, I think this could be something that would help me in my business too, especially because I'm doing like everything for the company. Like, what does that look like to work with you? Do they pick like out certain card images and then they submit text to you? Like, what would that process even look like? 
Well, everything is custom. I, I mean, everything, it's going to look like it came from your desk, you know, from the stationary design, you want a flat card, a foldover card. I mean, we can convert your handwriting. You can like authentically send notes in your handwriting. You can include inserts and gift cards. You can automate it through your software. So if you use uh, Salesforce, HubSpot, Zoho, Square, Stripe, I mean, whatever software you use to run your business, we can set up a trigger or an event. So say mm -hmm. a client pays a bill or a new client signs up or a client spends $1,000 with you, we can set up these triggers to automate sending a thank you note. Or if somebody, you know, hasn't bought in six months, you know, we can, you know, hasn't booked a meeting, we can set up an automated, hey, check it in, hope everything's doing okay, would love to book a time to chat. So really, you know, we've built a platform that's really flexible and we've seen amazing use cases from people for winning back, you know, lost clients, you know, saying mm -hmm. thank you to current clients or even just prospecting for new clients because it's just so different than what everybody else is doing. But it's fully customizable down to exactly what you need. It's going to look like it came from your desk. Mm -hmm. So is it there's, you know, like a CRM in your system too, that they, if they want to send over and over again to the same people, like their names are there and they go in and they check and say, please send this card. I want, you know, this type of card to go to them. And this is what it says. Like, yeah, we're more work? of like a hands-off automation. So we use like Zapier, Make, or Integromat, or Integrately, or an API integration, or a webhook. And it sounds a lot scarier than it is. It literally <laughs> takes five minutes to set up. Uh -huh. As long as you use like a normal, like, CRM or a normal payment platform it takes five minutes to set up. So basically we're setting up events. So like when a new customer comes on, we would automatically send a handwritten note. If you wanted mm -hmm. to do one-offs, like what you were just explaining, our website or our web app is perfect. Go to simplynoted.com. You can select one card, type in that one message and just hit send. And we can send a, you know, a one-off handwritten note as fast as you would send an email. So we're trying to build a platform really to be where our clients are. So wherever you're mm -hmm. at, we're trying to build something that's flexible to be used for however you want to use it. But we leverage, you know, technology to do that, which is Zapier, Integromat, or Make, or Integrately, or Webhook, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if someone also tracks, let's say when they first started working with a customer or birthdays or, you know, mm -hmm. special events or things like that too, can these be like scheduled ahead of time and say of like, course. you know, two weeks before someone's birthday, send out this card or however, you know, whenever you want to have that. Yep. So we have a birthday and anniversary automation tool on our website. I mean, our birthday tool is very popular. I would be completely transparently honest. Like <laughs> the only bad thing about that is like, the client's not your client anymore. We'll get people saying, hey, don't send that card. He's not my client. Or someone passes away. You don't want to send a birthday mm -hmm. card. So it's like, it's nice to plan it. But also mm -hmm. you got to make sure that when you plan it, you really want us to send it. Because, right. you know, some like that will happen. You know, if you plan mm -hmm. the birthday card to be sent six months from now, someone passes away and it gets it. It just may not look right, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see where that could yeah. trigger, you know, some negative feelings unfortunately yeah. as well so just staying on top of it not letting you know you f set it and forget it right you do have to remember yeah. to go yeah there's a, a little bit of you know paying attention to it you you want something that is this personal that is this powerful pen to paper where you're going to connect to your client you want to you want to manage it you don't want to just mm -hmm. purely set it and forget it because you know when they get something in the mailbox they're really going to think you sent it to them mm-hmm Right. Well, and I think the whole feeling is I don't think I would be frustrated if I saw a card and thought, oh, well, they used a company that had a robot write it for me. Because, again, it's like the thought behind it is mm -hmm. they were thinking of me. They wanted to show appreciation and they just use a different system. Right. To go ahead and create yeah. that. I wish I wish everybody thought like you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because some right. people. Don't, yeah. So. If someone is sending these out, I mean, it's one thing to maybe, you know, we had a prospect meeting and we send a thank you and they onboard. And yes, that looks like that's part of their, you know, responding maybe to our thank you note. But how would you maybe judge the effectiveness if you're sending them just ongoing for clients that are still ongoing? Like, how can you judge um, if that's helping? customer attrition and referrals. So you want to see how long your clients are staying, how much money they're spending, you know, lifetime value, the reviews they're writing, the people they're referring. And that's why appreciation marketing works so much better than just constantly trying to, uh, you know, 
go grab new clients or spend millions of dollars on adding a feature some people may not want. People feel extremely loyal to the brands that they love. And what we're trying Mm -hmm. to do is create a tool that helps build brand loyalty. And at the end of the day, I mean, there's a different person out there that can offer a similar service as you. So oftentimes the difference maker is the relationship, the person they trust, the Mm -hmm. person they like, the person who's connected with them in a way that no one else is connected with them. And this is that tool that we're trying to build to do that. So if if it's a 50-50 chance, they're going to lean your way because you went the extra effort to connect with them and build the relationship versus the other person did not. Mm -hmm. And can you maybe touch on just the costs that might be involved in all of this. So if someone is interested, they kind of know what they might expect. Yeah. So, I mean, we're five years in and our business has grown tremendously and we're now for the first time offering, you don't have to have a subscription, but if you want, you can get unlimited 97 cents handwritten notes, which is, I mean, three dollars cheaper than what you would pay at the the grocery store (laughs) it's Mm -hmm. like incredibly affordable if you don't want a subscription they start at three dollars and 25 cents but there's just businesses out there that would send more if it didn't cost three dollars and 25 cents so we're trying to help our clients scale their outreach and remove basically what's been the last barrier is like the high price because this is this does take time Mm -hmm. you know where most companies start and finish, we start. Like we have the same commercial printing press that we print off the card, then we cut it and score it, but then we have to manually pick it up, send it to our, and put it in our writing robots. And other companies just print it and put it in an envelope and go. So -hmm. there is a little bit more work here. That's why it does cost a little bit more than like a printed card. But when you see it, you'll understand why. I mean, it just, it literally looks like you, you sent it. I mean, lick your thumb. It smears the ink like a normal pen. It has pen indentations. We use weighted pens that we build. These are like super heavy pens. So it actually digs mm-hmm. into the paper when it writes. Yeah, I mean, it's mm-hmm. really cool. Blame on the subscription. When you talked about the cost, I'm thinking, I mean, postage is, you know, just a little less than 70 cents right now, right? Mm-hmm. So it's really not that much more than a, a stamp if you're on a mm-hmm. subscription. So what is the number of cards that would have to be sent out monthly or however long to be considered a subscription, an ongoing subscription? So we have uh, multiple plans. I mean, free, you can send as you want, but then we have like tiers from like a hundred to five. If you're sending a hundred a month, go with this one. If you're sending 500 a month, go with this one. If you're sending a thousand a month, go with this one. Then we have an enterprise mm-hmm. level plan, which is, I mean, sending tens of thousands a month. But yeah, I mean, we have different options that people, will, most people are going to stay in the free. It's just, they're going to send one or two projects a year or they're just going to send a few cards a month. But for the businesses out there who truly want to, you know, say if you're an insurance or mortgage, you want to spend a couple thousand a couple times a year. I mean, you're mm-hmm. going to want to subscribe because this, the savings are significant. Right. And I know we talked about in your bio, even some of the industries that you've worked with, but do you see that this is more effective in some industries or it's kind yes. of across the board? Anyone could use it. So, I mean, the problem is is we can work with anybody because every business has a client, but what I've Mm -hmm. seen work the best are the relationship driven industries, like where connecting personally matters. So nonprofit, political insurance, real estate, mortgage, you know, that customer facing relationship driven type of industry. That's where this really thrives Mm -hmm. just because there's so many competitors and there's so many options and like if you're thinking like real estate, that's a very personal sell, mm-hmm. right? If you're thinking nonprofit, like fundraising, that's a very personal. My wife's been a nonprofit fundraising for 12 years. Like stewardship and donor relations is huge. Political, mm-hmm. right? Support the cause. So, right. yeah, those relationship driven industries for sure, just because there's so much competition out there. The second someone's not happy anymore, you know, mm-hmm. they're going to jump ship or, you know, where people really are just competing on price and race at the bottom, having that relationship will help not compete, you know, in those areas like that anymore. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you want to share on this topic that maybe I didn't think to ask a question on that you think would be important for the listeners to know? I would say just request a sample kit. You know, that's, we send everybody a free sample kit. We spend about $25 just on a kit to get you the information that you need to get a good idea about us. Also research the the technology on our page, like see the robots. We're the only company in the world that's truly built its own robot. And that matters for a few reasons. It's the best writing quality, fastest production times, best integration possibilities for our business clients. 3PL support, you know, going into major, major like scalability. 
And then, yeah, I would just say really focus on thank you, even though everybody has like the itch to try it for marketing. I think it's great for marketing if if you're selling the right product, you know, it's like a five figure sale, you know, 10,000, whatever, just because the cost is so high, you know, if you're going to do them at, mm-hmm. at large volumes, but really focus on relationship. You know, we have to get back to that. You know, when I was in sales, that's what made me successful. I was literally relentlessly driven to build the best relationship with my client and go further than any other rep would. So I knew how you built, how you win business is how you lose business. And I didn't want to lose business because of price. And I didn't want to win business because of price. If I was going to lose a client, I wanted to know I lost because that person beat me at relationship. And Mm -hmm. I think in order to build a business, like we talked about before this, like 90% of businesses fail within the first five years. It's because mm-hmm. they focus on the wrong things. You know, they don't focus on the product. They don't focus on the customer. They dump all the mar- money into marketing and sales. And you got to have a holistic, long-term approach to your business. What am I going to do today that's going to make us successful a year from now, three years from now, five years from now? And it's not dumping money into Google ads or, you know, hiring six more sales reps. It's making sure your product is as if at, if at least as good as everybody else, but a little bit better than everybody else. And then focus on that relationship, talk to your clients, see what they love, see what they hate about what you do and be focused on building that relationship with the client. If you do, you will beat the statistic. And I mean, we just passed five and a half years. So we are a part of that eight or 9% that make it to five, five years. And then mm-hmm. it gets even worse to 10. Like it's like another 95% of companies fail by 10 years. So it's like, right. but how you win, I don't care. I've seen it at, at medical sales. I've seen it even in the NFL. I've seen it here. It's relationship. Like, like relation. I, I made a team because I had a really good relationship with my coach. And I, I really didn't think, I, I thought another guy had a better preseason. I had a good relationship. He trusted me. Mm-hmm. Like relationship wins. If anybody's going to take anything away from this, it's about relationship. Focus on how you can build the best relationship with your clients. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, I know you mentioned a kit. I don't know if that was the offer you wanted to share, but I always do ask my guests if there is an offer they would like to have for our listeners. So, yeah, I mean, anybody can go to simplynota.com and send their first card for free. So just so you can try it, no risk. It's just use checkout code or coupon code one free. And that's all caps, like one cap capital F, capital R, capital E, capital E. And then also, I mean, send a card for free, try it out, you know, send it to your friend and see what they think and then request a sample kit. We'll send you a sample kit. And it's just, I I don't say this is the the be all like tool for you. It's just another tool in your tool belt in your business. Just like how you have a CRM, an email tool, a calling tool. This is your, you know, your relationship building handwritten note automation tool. That's all we're trying to be. We're basically trying to be like the constant contact of handwritten notes, integrate Mm -hmm. beautiful campaigns and automate, you know, faster than email. Nice. And if anyone wants to reach out and connect with you, where would they find you? LinkedIn. So that's like my only social media place. Um, I have like 30 something thousand connections on there. I try to respond within an hour. It's usually between calls. So yeah, LinkedIn is just Rick, R-I-C-K, Elmore, E-L-M-O-R-E. Perfect. Well, thank you, Rick, for being a guest on my show and talking about this topic. It's interesting and I'm sure something that others really haven't listened to too much yet. So I appreciate the time that you had this discussion with me today. Thanks for having me. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in today. I hope you found this topic interesting and enjoyed the informative discussion. Would you please share my show with those you know and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform? I'd really appreciate your support. If you have any additional questions or comments, be sure to reach out to my guest at any of the links that they shared, or you could send me a message at media at abandp.com. I hope you can join me for my next interview. And remember, you can connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And my website is abandp.com. This episode is sponsored by Affordable Bookkeeping and Payroll Services. If you are overwhelmed trying to handle the financial aspects of your business, ABMP is here to help. Contact us today to discuss your needs at 310-534-5577 or contact at abandp.com. My team and I are eager to assist you. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. 
Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next time. Have a terrific day.